Hey guys, as a high elo player who smurfs a lot to better understand low elo, I very often come across fairly decent players who are pretty good at their role. I'm not ashamed to admit I sometimes even get outplayed and solo killed by some of them. But there's so many low elo players and even the smurfs I play against in smurf queue now that I feel are held back by very minor issues. More often than not, something very small can hold players back more than they realize. So in this guide, I'm going to tackle one major issue I see in every role that might be having disastrous consequences on your ability to carry. Let's get into it. Starting with mid lane, the very first thing people say about that role is how much game impact you have. You're in the center of the map, you can be top, bottom, in the enemy jungle, etc. Access to influence everywhere is what enables mid laners to have the highest carrying potential out of all the roles, except for jungle of course, which I tend to find ironic as that is literally how most low elo mid laners tend to throw the lane against me. Without any hesitation, when I thought of what holds mid laners back, I immediately thought about roaming. I don't know what it is with every smurf and low elo player, they just roam all over the place all the time. Believe me, I'm very aware of the meta being very roam heavy and mid lane assassins who kill everyone being favored, at least for when this guide was written, but I would say that is mostly for high elo. Look, if I'm going to be roaming to an exquisite top laner like TF Blade, I know that he knows how to bait a gank, how to deny vision around his lane, and if we have to set up a dive, I know that he knows how to execute it based on the champions that both he and I are playing, as well as what we're actually trying to dive so that there's no room for error. The problem when it comes to low elo is that if you're trying to roam towards Timmy, he may not even know that you're coming until you're already there, and it doesn't even matter if you do literally everything right if your teammates can't consistently execute on what you want them to do. More often than not, they waste your time, and due to the fact that you're on a fast ticking clock to get back to mid because of how short the lane is, even if you did end up scoring a kill, it can sometimes not even be worth it due to how much time was expended and how much you missed while you were gone from the lane. I want to put this game I played in pretty fast speed. You're not meant to make out everything going on, but to get a sense of the fact that I almost never leave mid if I'm genuinely trying to win when I'm playing low elo. I would say in about 90% of my games, I don't roam a single time from mid at least until the laning phase is over. It doesn't matter to me at all that my opponents score kills when they roam. If you're actually pushing, denying experience, taking plates, and getting good base timings off, then your opponent will on average lose way more than they gain by roaming, again in low elo. I think the only times I genuinely leave lane are when my opponent has already roamed, then I push the wave to deny them experience, and only then will I go try and see if I can help my team. I do want to pause the roaming hate train for a moment, because I don't want you to think that you should literally never learn how to do it or ever apply it in your games. But instead of just roaming because you think you should be roaming, you should be looking for actual good opportunities to do it. A ton of considerations should go through your head, like is my champion in general good at roaming? Do I have tier 2 boots to get there as quickly as possible in the back? How fast can my opponent push when I leave the lane? Is the mid pressure I'm losing worth it? Etc etc. Personally, I do think that I'll eventually make a full dedicated guide on this topic. I cannot emphasize enough just how much you're conceding every time you go for a coin flip roam in low elo. Even if you don't fully understand why it's bad, try playing without roaming more often. Instead of pressuring the map, pressure your lane with your leads. You might notice that things get a lot easier for you and that your leads are thrown a lot less. Now for the most important role in the game, jungle. A big error that I will see both from low elo and even smurf junglers is that they'll often skip efficient camps on their way to a gank. It may not sound like a big deal, but I'm going to show you just how game losing it can be when punished appropriately and why it's better to avoid doing it in low elo games. Alright, so for this game I was playing Hecarim and here's what I noticed early on. I full cleared towards topside this game and never really encountered the enemy Evelyn. I got the top lane scuttle and then I just ended up basing so that I could go re full clear my jungle since I didn't really see any gank opportunities. When I got to the area I went into the river to confirm my suspicions. Since we hadn't seen Evelyn yet and the fact that this crab was dead, I could very likely assume that she started on blue, full cleared and ended up here at scuttle and she's probably recalled by now. So I just go back to full clearing my jungle as I said. And then, as I'm finishing the wolves, we spot Evelyn for the first time on the map. I quickly press tab to see what she's been up to, and finish killing my raptors as she's trying to kill my jacks. 
Her failed gank gave us perfect information as to where she was, and since my mid laner happened to be winning, we just set up in the river and got a pretty easy kill on her. Okay, so far with every detail I've shown you, what should you immediately do here after killing her? I can't say that I like trying this hard in low elo, but I wanted to prove a point, and so I counted Evelyn's CS when I pressed tab, and so should you have. If you notice, she had 32 CS, which tells us something very important. We know that she initially full cleared into Scuttle, which is 28 CS. We're also aware that she ganked Jax coming from the blue side jungle, which means she only did one camp off of her reset. Basically, I now have perfect information to know that I should invade her jungle after killing her to take the remaining camp that's still there. Not only that, but it also puts me into a prime position to go through a transition through the mid lane towers and even take her raptors as well. Technically, I think the game is completely over for her at this point, so let's break down why what she did was so bad and why I suggest avoiding it in low elo. If you didn't skip the mid lane section, you'd recall how unreliable it is to play around low elo players. You never really know what's going to happen when you gank somewhere. The enemy player could turn it around on you 1v2, you might get counter teleported, something can go wrong when you gank. A gank not working out or dying isn't the problem. The issue is that if things go wrong for you, then things went well for your opponents. Duh. So basically that means if anything goes wrong in your gank, then everything left in the area that you didn't farm is right for the taking. Considering how snowbally the jungle roll is, that's not going to be good for you. Let's imagine a world where this exact same scenario happened, but Evelyn had taken the time to kill her wolf camp. All I would have left to do after killing her is fall back to my Krugs and then recall. Yes, obviously she would have still died, but the game wouldn't be as over for her since I wouldn't have just taken two free jungle camps. What I want to get at is that it's usually better to just take your time before getting to lanes. In high elo, kill opportunities are much more scarce, and you might not want to miss out on a kill by doing a camp. But in low elo, the risk of your teammates misplaying is way too high. Not only that, but low elo players leave themselves vulnerable for much longer. Even if you delay getting there by 5 or 10 seconds, it really doesn't matter. More often than not, your opponent will still be misplaying and leaving themselves open to a gank, so there should be no rush to get there. Obviously, in ridiculous situations where your opponent is tower diving your teammate at 10% HP, yes, you should rush over there and skip your camps. But if you have absolutely any doubts about what's going to happen when you go gank someone, then just take your time, get your camps, and I promise the gank will still be there. Moving on to top lane, there is usually one major issue that most low elo top laners have, which makes it really easy to beat them. The recurring problem that most of them have is that they almost always refuse to be bored for a couple of minutes. You see, top is by far the most scripted, flowcharty lane of them all. For example, here's how a typical top lane phase might look like. Let's say I was playing a matchup where I have early control of the wave. What that means is that I can build a slow push to cheat a recall on the third wave. Fantastic! With my item advantage, I'll now walk back the lane, proceed to thin the wave, and set up a freeze. My opponent is now forced out of the lane and has to expend their teleport to match my items. Now all I have to do is respect that they have wave advantage and let it crash into my tower. And here's where things get wild, folks. I will now use a bounce back slow push to build yet another crash, enabling me to take another recall. <laughs> and here's where it all comes together. With a freeze and teleport advantage, all I have to do now is... Okay, you surely get the point by now. The problem is that if you want to be a good top laner, that flow chart type of sequence where you play from one wave tactic to another is a lot of what that lane is actually about and it's hard to execute those kind of strategies if you get bored easily. Let me show you what a clearly bored top laner looks like so you know what I mean. For this game, I was playing Kale against a Garen. The standard crash happens where he built up the first three waves since I couldn't really do anything about it. The flowchart then dictates that Garen should either now base, or at the very least let the wave push back into him. But that would be way too boring, of course, so he's going to try to harass me under the tower. Not only does he fail to do any meaningful damage, but he's also hitting the wave at the same time, which means that the wave will continue to stay at my side of the lane, enabling me to keep free farming. 
and this is going to continue for quite a while. He's so bored that he can't fight me that he keeps screwing his only chances to force me out of my tower. All he has to do is be bored for one minute, let the wave push outside of my tower, and I would be completely screwed. But no, again, that would be boring. I'm not someone who shies away from his mistakes, so I will show you the truth. I did actually end up dying to this Garen. <sighs> but please do not let this detract from my earlier points. Basically, this Garen was giving me a free laning phase until I tilted that I wasn't going to get this cannon, so I took a huge chunk of damage for no reason. If anything, this should serve as a better lesson for what I'm trying to say. Yes, he did end up getting a kill, but it was only due to my own incompetence. Perma pushing and hoping that your opponent screws up all the time is a horrible way of consistently climbing elo. Basically, the overall lesson is that if you're not bored like 80% of the time in top lane, then you're probably doing something wrong. The lane is almost entirely about slow pushing, bouncing, and long-term wave setups. If you really want to get better at top lane, then self-discipline is one of the better things you can master so you don't make the same mistakes as Garen was. After all, there's only so much you can count on your opponent screwing up before they start playing correctly and beating you down. Let's talk ADC now. I would love to just immediately say that the biggest issue most low elo ADCs have is that they don't know how to maximize their farm and they don't know how to split push effectively. We do tend to mention that in a lot of ADC guides though, so here's a different type of tip. It may not apply to all of you, but my god are ADCs by far the most aggressive role in low elo in terms of what they should actually be doing. They're just constantly trying to trade, fully committing to fights, and absolutely getting blasted for it. I know many of you may not have this issue, but as ADC, you really shouldn't feel pressured to win the game so hard. More often than not, waiting for your opponents to lose and punishing appropriately is the much more consistent way of winning in low elo as ADC. And I know that's not what people want to hear. Uh, just play safe, consistently. But it is my firm belief that you can't make montage level plays if you can't avoid being in a montage yourself. Basically, you can't know what good aggression is until you know what bad aggression actually looks like. That happens to also be a random personal point of pride that I have, that I've only ever been in one montage. And to be fair, I was playing Ramus versus Fizz, so I don't think anyone here is really going to count that against me, so... Anyways, back to the point at hand. Playing safe and consistent doesn't mean you don't have pressure though. I think this is where people misunderstand sometimes. ADC is more about holding your ground and hard punishing your opponents when they do mess up because they very often will. Even though you're supposed to play defensive in low elo and even high elo, I'll still get turbo fed every game because everyone is just inting the whole time. It doesn't mean I don't have pressure. So there's no real need to make this role that can't play hyper aggressively play a style that it doesn't need to, especially in low elo. And finally, word support, and this one is going to sound a bit like the ADC issue we just talked about. From what I've noticed, supports are just way too easy to kill in low elo. For a role that can hard carry in multiple different ways, it's pretty bad to throw away so much power just because of a couple of reasons that you may not be considering. First, let's talk about range supports. Look, if the enemy team composition is threatening to you in any way, then you shouldn't have like an ego thing about your positioning. I know support players in particular are often flamed for standing really far back, especially by their ADCs, but it can be correct to play that way a lot of the time. For example, this Zillion is trying way too hard to do fancy stuff and get perfect CC on my team, but then he's touched by literally anything and he's instantly dead. You do not need to be this far up to help your team. If you're dying this consistently to my AP Nasus, then there's a big problem in your positioning. Let's contrast that to a game where I'm playing Nami. Look at how far back I'm standing. I'm literally in Argentina, but I'm still very helpful to my team. Being over here, I'm still in range to help peel enemy melee champions that jump on my carries, and I can still access the enemy backline through buffs on my own allies. I'm both being incredibly safe, and I'm still as useful as a forward playing rage support. There isn't any shame in playing this way against threatening comps. You're a squishy, valuable target, so play like it. As for engage supports, there is one very consistent trend that is still going on in low elo, which is the cause of so many unnecessary deaths. 
If you're still building mobility boots, then you should immediately stop and never build them again, at least until they're buffed. Mobies are about punishing very minor positional mistakes, and I firmly believe they should only ever be built in competitive play against the best players in the world. Swifties are more than good enough to punish players in low elo who are making much bigger positional errors. The problem with mobies is the self-slowing effect. If you are ever tagged by literally anything, you're just dead because you can't reposition. I'm going to give you an example. Look at this Alistar who had Moby boots in this game. Oh, he made a minor positional mistake. And there goes his entire health bar, ultimate, and flash. Look, here's another small positional mistake he made. Oh, and he's dead, dead, dead. They are just so atrociously awful and you should never, ever build them in low elo. And any mistake you make is going to be catastrophic and likely result in your death. Alright, and that is going to wrap up this guide. Before I close this one out, I wanted to make sure you know where these guides come from. Skill cap. We work really hard on exclusive guides every week to teach you the information that actually helps you improve. Not only that, but we're doing a special sign up discount if you want to help me out and save some money. Use code HECTOR to get access to over 1600 guides that are all organized into courses to master the most important fundamentals to learn League of Legends, such as wave control, macro, trading, and so on. We also have a money back guarantee, so there's no worries if you don't enjoy the service. See ya!